What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today for the review for Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 2 Episode 13 and the episode was titled A Not So Wonderful Surprise. Um, so yeah, you guys, who Carlos King, if you guys have any show ideas, please go to his production company's website and submit them because he's doing the damn thing when it comes to reality television on own. Real Housewives of Atlanta, y'all shot y'all selves in him. I don't care what he did over there at Real Housewives of Atlanta, y'all need him back because Love and Mary Chanceville and Bell Collective, they coming for Real Housewives of Atlanta. Just saying. But you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump into this episode review, shall we? All right, you guys, so we're going to start up with Marceau and Tisha. So in this episode, I'm probably I'm not probably going to do any of, you know, I'm not going to do the Tisha voice. I'm probably not going to do the male voice either. So in this episode, we well, you know what? I might do it. So we see Tisha. So Tisha goes over to Destiny's store. You know, her, her hair care store looks pretty nice. The question that I had when I saw Destiny was she had her baby with her. And I'm just thinking to myself, where is LaBaric? <laughs> like, you would literally think she's a single parent and not a married woman with her baby in the store. And I'm like, wait a minute. The issue that I have with the baby being in the store is we're in the middle of a pandemic. So that baby's immune system is not built up the way that, you know, an adult is. And even with adults, we can, we, you know, they're adults dying. I was just like, damn, pandemic, this baby should be at home. But, you know, again, where's LaBerry? So Tisha stomped down because, you know, it's, it's time to wash the girl's hair. So she just needs to get some hair care stuff. So she gets the hair care stuff. So then Destiny asked her, you know, she, she saw the business, you know, and she's just asking them, like, how has the pandemic treated them? And, you know, she's like, you know, the pandemic, it was like a blessing in disguise because, you know, we were able to, you know, get the things in there that need to be in there. And I'm just like, oh, it, it. Tisha's voice is really annoying. Got to be honest with you guys. So then Tisha, you know, she invites, um, you know, Destiny to the, the Mommy Business Podcast. I really hate hearing her say that. Mommy Business Podcast. I really hate that podcast. <laughs> I just hate hearing her talk about that podcast. It gets on my nerves. So she talks about the fact that she wants Destiny there and that she also wants Kimmy there as well. Okay, cool. The issue that I did have is with Destiny. So Destiny keeps talking about this situation with she and Kimmy. Girl, it wasn't that deep. Like, Kimmy said all she knew about your man was that he sold chicken. That's not a bad thing. Let it go. Like Elsa said from Frozen, let it go. Let it go. It ain't that deep. So then, you know, Destiny asked her how are things between she and Mel. God. <laughs> things between me, Mel and... um. See, Tisha is an is is an enigma to me. She's she's just so interesting. So she's talking about the fact that she and Mel haven't talked to each other, and she says that Mel is going around talking about her. And when she says she's talking about it, she said it's her business. And then when she went deeper, she said it's the logo. So it's the you know embrace Mel's um, business and the the mommy business podcast. Did the logos look similar? I don't care. Put it that simply. Don't care if they look similar or not. It's stupid. It's really childish and really petty. But whatever. So then we later see um, Tisha and um, Marso as they are, you know, doing a design for Scott Manor and his uncle. What the hell was his name? His uncle something is there. I don't forgot what the man's name was. Didn't, t didn't put it down in my notes. So then Chris, you know, the um, the broker for um, Martel stops by and he's informing Marceau about this project and let him know that, you know, um, Martel, you know, suggested his name. And, you know, Marceau's like, OK, you know, if this works out, then he'll be in. So 
So then he goes back in and he's telling Tisha about it. And he mentions the hopes. And um, immediately she's like, no, we don't want to do that. He's like, oh, we don't. You know, it's really the way that Marceau treats Tisha. As much as I don't care for Tisha, the way he talks to her and it just, I couldn't be married to somebody like a Marceau. You know what I'm saying? I just really couldn't be. Because he, he talks down to her. It's like he demeans her. He, contra, he, he, he condescends. It's condescending. It's demeaning. It's chauvinistic. It's all that stuff wrapped in one, the way he talks to her. And I will give T, I will be on Tisha's side for one thing. Because he did, you know, what he said after he said that, you know, they're they're selling the 40, you know, the 46 acres. He didn't he, he, he didn't leave with that. And she said that he did not leave with that. If you had a led with that, maybe she would have said something different because he did immediately mention the Holtz. He didn't mention anybody else. So the way that he talked to her, I would have slapped his ass. Period. Point blank. I just would have hauled off and slapped him. I would have hauled off. And slapped all the teeth out of Marceau's mouth. And the crazy thing is, when I look at Marceau, he actually looks like one of my twin uncles. He looks like one of my twin uncles. Because that's all I can see is my uncle's face. Because they look similar. But my uncle wasn't like Marceau was. My uncle was not a chauvinist. Or, oh God, let's move on. I'm tired of talking about Marceau. All right, you guys, and then Lex, let's talk about Martell. <sighs> Martell. So we see Martell. He's out buying a suit with his uncle Dexter. And the, the main thing I kept thinking to myself was I hope that this man gets a suit that fits him. Because his suits as of late have been skin tight, form fitting. And then in his in his um, confessional looked at one shirt. It looked like a blouse because it had a ruffle up here. I'm like, damn, I did not know that they made blouses for men. Just saying. So then they start talking about him and Mel and the kids. Honestly, even let's go back to last week's episode when, you know, Melody and Martel got into it. Y'all hadn't told the kids. Y'all told the kids going to the house, but... The kids were still privy to the argument that you guys had with one another. So it's gonna be this is gonna be an interesting one for them, those two. Because there's so much animosity between both of them. There's so there's so much disdain for one another that you know, I, I hate to say it, but I just I, I feel like the kids are gonna go get caught in the crossfire. I know that that's not what they want. But at this point, they're not doing a good job. And I'm going to place fault on both of them. I'm not going to place fault on Martel or Melody. You know, in the, I'm not going to say that, you know, it's just one. It's literally both of them. They're both to blame because, like I said, they're doing it in front of the kids. Because Mel, I'm going to get on Mel and then I'm going to get on Martel. You know, when he came over to the crib in the last episode, Mel fed into what he wanted. He he started he started baiting her. He started antagonizing her, and she gave into it. Right. So, the easiest thing for Mel to do would just be to be like, "Okay, Martel, this is what you want to do. You have at it. You do that. I'm not giving you the time of day. Like you can have fun with whatever you want to do, but I'm not entertaining you." Because what you want to do is get a rise and a reaction out of me. And the best reaction for me is no reaction. So that's what she could have did. And then Martel, he's being, he's very childish. Like, so he picks these fights with Mel so the way she can blow up at him and he can, you know, use that to his advantage. So like I said, it's, it's, it's on both of them. So I'm not on either one of their sides. I have to be honest and call it what it is. It's both Mel and Martel. He starts it. And she engages in it once. If he starts something with you, Mel, don't engage the man. Don't engage him because that's exactly what he wants from you is for you to engage with him. Be like, you know what, Martel? 
why are you coming at me? We getting a divorce, right? You got your baby with your other girl, go be with her. Leave me alone, let me live my life. Like that's what she needs to do. Don't even, just don't entertain the man, period. Because once you stop entertaining him, he'll leave you alone. Just saying. So then they talk about, he talks with his uncle about the businesses. Um. Yeah, this divorce is going to get ugly before it gets peace. There's any peace. It's going to be ugly as hell. Like, I'm, I, I can feel it right now. Those business. Now, the embrace business, that's the interesting one. So did he put anything into the business? Because he's talking about what's hers is, you know, what's his is some of hers and what's hers is some of his. And I was like, embrace, but I, I guess because it's under the whole name. I, I don't know. Y'all have, they have somebody explain that to me. Um, and then he was talking about, you know, the project that, um, that he's working on, you know, the, uh, the 47, is it 46 or 47, however many acres. See, Martel wants to sit here and blame Melody for the way social media has reacted to his cheating. You can't place blame on Mel for that. Now, should Mel have gone on social media with that, that information? Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. But we can't. you can't even sit here and put it all on Mel because Ariane also has talked to people as well. So you gonna blame her as well? Martel needs to look in the mirror and take accountability for the things that he's done. That's what he needs to do is take accountability for what he's done. You cheated. But I mean, you're on, and number one, you're on a reality show. So what did you expect? You're on a reality show if you're cheating he is never mind so then we do see melody and martell and they are having a meeting to discuss the business so martell is telling melody he doesn't want us a repeat of what happened when he came over to the crib and she's like but you came over to see the kids right he said i came over to see the kids business everything and, and see this is where he, he loses me all the time so if you went to see the kids and talk about business why did you go personal because like I said a few minutes ago, you started. She reacts to what you say. And Mel, like I said a few minutes ago, stop reacting to him. Don't the best reaction for someone like Martel is no reaction. That would be a huge blow to his ego if you just don't react to him at all. Um so yeah, they're talking about the businesses and what they're gonna dissolve. He's talking about her embrace business. That one is still like I said, that one is just interesting to me because She's did she's the thing. Oh, they do have a joint account, don't they? Ooh, that is gonna be an interesting run. Because if they do have a joint business account, and every oh god, that it depends on what the name and what it's under. Because it is it under Holt and Holt. Because if it's under hold and hold, then he might have something there. Huh. That's an interesting one. That is a really interesting one. Now, here's my issue with Martel. So, Martel wants to talk about the fact that when Melody moved out, she talked to a guy. She said, yeah, she did talk to a guy for four weeks. But I'm still thinking to myself, so even if she was talking to a guy for four weeks, what they got to do with you? I mean, I get it. She's your wife, but you were cheating on her before, so make it make sense. Because it, it's not making sense. It's not making sense. All Martell is doing is deflecting. That's literally all Martell loved is doing is deflecting. But we're going to move on, you guys. All right, you guys, next let's talk about Maurice. So Maurice is in Jalen's office, who is, he's measuring his office. I guess he's getting ready to put some stuff in there. The one question that I have about Jalen is, why does he talk so slow? Jalen talks like a mile a minute. It's almost like he's mumbling to an extent. So Maurice is talking to Jalen about his plans as far as real estate. 
Now, I get, I, I do understand Maurice to a small extent what he's talking about. I said this in last week's review. I do understand Maurice. I get it. As far as being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and wanting to do something in your specific field, you would want to gain knowledge and experience, you know, wherever you can. But at the same time, because it's almost like an, I, I, it's almost like he's saying, in a sense, get an internship. But he's not saying he's not saying those words. But that's kind of what it is: get an internship. But the thing with that is, if there's, because Jalen keeps saying, no one in his field is hiring at this point because of COVID. So what do you expect the man to do? Like, I, I don't get what Maurice expects for him to do. I'm in agreement with Kimmy. He needs to have a job. He needs to have work ethic, you know, because I, I feel like work ethic is, is the most important thing that you could have. I think that's the most important thing. You have to have a good, strong work ethic. Because if you're going to work for yourself, you definitely have to have a work ethic. Because at that point, if you're working for yourself, you're the one that's going out and making the money. No, <clears throat> like you're not sitting on someone's clock every day just expecting, you know, at the end of a week or two weeks for a paycheck. When you are working for yourself, you got to hustle. You got to get out there and get it. So again, like I said, the work ethic comes hand in hand. It teaches you, uh, it teaches you a lot. So well, I'm in agreement with Kimmy. But then, like I said, going back to this whole fact that he said that there's nothing in his, in his field because of COVID, where's he going to gain experience from? Where is he getting experience from at this point? If there's nothing in his field that's hiring, the man needs something that's going to bring in some money. And then Maurice is also talking about the fact that he's living at home with them, rent free. You know, everything is taken care of. Again, I get that. But let's 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 switch gears real quick. Let's talk about like Marie from um, Bell Collective. Look at her son. Has no work ethic, has nothing because he, everything was handed to him. If you guys hand everything to Jalen, what's the purpose in him getting a job? What's the purpose in him working? If my parents are just going to do everything for me, I don't need to do anything. You just, if you, if you hand everything to your kids, you're just raising a lazy bum, basically, I feel. You got to teach your kids the value of a dollar and hard work ethic. I am 100% in agreement with Kimmy. And like I said, I do get where Maurice is coming from because Maurice was talking about when he graduated college, you know, he still had money from his refund and he went and bought a house for a thousand, a property for a thousand dollars. Okay. Now, that didn't make a lot of sense to me because let me explain it to you why it didn't make sense to me. So it depends on what kind of property did you buy? Did you buy an old rundown ass house that you have to, you know, rehabilitate or did you buy a I know, you know, I know you didn't buy a brand new place for not a thousand dollars. You have to buy something that you probably bought something from an auction. Right. You had to put money into it. The man, I mean, and I get it, the man, I get it, Jalen has no debt because, you know, and, and that's, here's again, I, I, I applaud, I applaud everything that Kimmy is saying. Jalen has no debt. That's good, because I have debt to the student loans. Not that much, but I have debt to student loans from when I went to college. I know that I'm going to do things differently when I go to grad school. Um, so yeah, he has no debt. He lives at home with you guys. See, my mom was actually my mom was exactly like uh, Kimmy is. Although, like I said, I do have debt from college. When I graduate, when I graduated college, and my mom knew exactly what I wanted to do. She knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, kind of like what Jalen wants to do. And actually, I was a year older than what Jalen was when I graduated college. I was twenty-two. I, my birthday had just actually my birth. You know the. Um, the date that's on my diploma, I had just turned 23. So I was fresh out of college I, and I still want to be an entrepreneur. 
but you know, I, I, with the jobs that I've had over the years, I've learned because I want to be in management. Elvis, with the jobs that I've had over the years, I've learned the good things about being a manager, and I've learned what not to do as a manager. You know, with owning your own business. But my mom also stressed to me that you know, you still, like Kimmy said, yes, you want to do, yes, you want to do so many things for yourself, but at the end of the day you still need to work and be able to depend on yourself. And that is the one thing that I can, you know, to this day I can say thank you to my mother for is because, you know, <clears throat> you guys know my mom has passed away. She's been deceased now for almost four years. And I've been independent on my own for the last four years without my mother. And I'm so thankful for that, you know, that she and my grandmother instilled in me hard work and ethic. And, and a strong work ethic. <clears throat> so, suffice it to say, I, you know, I get where Maurice is coming from, but when there's no opportunities, what do you do? You go make the money and take care of yourselves. Like I said, you just don't want Jalen to be dependent on you and Kimmy. That's not, ra that's not raising a responsible adult, I feel. But, you know, I'm getting off of that soapbox because I feel like I'm getting too preachy at this point. So then let's move over to Jalen's party that they're having. So everyone shows up. I will say, however, Mel looked really good in that outfit she had on. I mean, she had the girls out. I'm like, come on, Mel. If Martel's going to be there, show him what he's missing out on. Maybe not. I don't know. So Tisha, I don't know why she felt the need to bring up the Mommy Business Podcast. So she's, talk, she's telling um, Kimmy that she wants her to be a part of it and also the fact that Destiny is going to be a part of it as well. So then Destiny says, well, why not all the mommies be a part of it? I was like, oh, Destiny, why did you do that? Why did you do that? So, you know, Kimmy, oh, not Kimmy, but um, Tisha's like, well, I don't know if Mel wants to be a part of it. Yeah, Destiny really should have kept her mouth closed about that situation. That did not even need to be brought up. So, where in the hell did Wanda come from? <laughs> Kimmy looks shocked to see Wanda because um, she was like, oh, I guess, you know, I guess, you know, Marceau and Tisha invited you. She was like, yeah, they did invite me. Was I not invited? With that statement she made, Wanda, you know you weren't invited. I really wish she would take whatever that is out of her hair. It's a mess. So then, you know, Martel shows up. Now, before Martel showed up, you know, um, uh, Mel told, you know, Kimmy, like, hey, um, you know, if you got a speech to say to Jalen, can you know, is it, can't, can't, you know, let me know when you're going to get your speech and when you're done so I can kind of ease on out of here. So once Kimmy finished with her speech, she eased on out. Who followed them behind her and Destiny? Messy, messy Wanda. For Wanda to have said so much stuff about Mel, she gonna sit there and tell the woman she, you know, there's somebody better out there for her. Martel, you look really bitch made gotta be honest she looked bitch made following in behind Wanda now if Wanda has said something about your daughters you shouldn't be the one addressing Wanda the only person that should be addressing Wanda should be Mel like I just did not agree with Martel bucking up at Wanda now granted I don't like Wanda I can't I don't see it for Wanda but Martel you look like a whole ass bitch bucking up at Wanda like, like, calm your tits. Calm your tits. So, then let's move back over to Tisha talking to Kimmy. <laughs> Tisha felt that it was rude of Kimmy to say something to Wanda about the fact that she and Marceau invited her to Jalen's party. And Kimmy was like, but I didn't invite her. She was like, but that was rude, Kimmy. I was like, rude. 
me and Kimmy both said the same thing, but it wasn't rude to invite her someone she wasn't invited. Kimmy, I mean, Tisha, girl, get the hell out of here with that. Miss me with that bull. Miss me with that bull. But you guys, that was Love and Marriage Huntsville. This show's reviews are really long. I noticed that the first review was long and last week's review was long. And this week's review is longer as even, I think this week's review is even longer than last week's review. I think, I mean, this is a really good show, <laughs> suffice it to say, because I mean, I'm giving y'all four reviews. I haven't, I mean, God, I don't know the last time I've done this long of a review for a show. It might be Potomac. But yeah, you guys, that was um, Love and Marriage Jones. If you like this video, leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share this video, you guys, and until the next one, you guys, do me a solid favor. Stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance, and we'll get through this together. And also, get down in that description bar. Go and check out my affiliate link and also go subscribe to the Planner channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Carlos King, please go back to Atlanta for Real Housewives. We need you. I'll see you guys later. Bye.